Please elaborate on this quote from your website. I believe that the human body is truly amazing. Our bodies have evolved over two and a half million years to fight off infection, think, feel, break down food, detoxify harmful substances, and create life, a series of evolutionary miracles built on our ever-changing environment. Within the past 200 years, the human mind and imagination has brought forth more change than ever before in history, the industrial and Technological revolutions have transformed the human experience and way of life into a fast-paced world of technology, chemical production, and greater convenience. We've not been able to appropriately evolve on the evolutionary timeline as fast as our surroundings have changed. The polluted air, food additives, toxins, and emotional stressors, to name a few, have had a negative impact on our bodies. We are human, and we break. Yeah. Um, you know, I... I, I... I really do believe all of that. And, you know, it comes from a place again of frustration where I'm seeing sicker and younger people. Um, and it, it's just one of those things where when the data supports what I'm saying, when I, when I really, it took me 10 years to really feel confident enough to know that what I'm saying is true and has evidence and supported by really smart people that do this for a living. Um, and it's not just one small faction or one group or one institution. This is a big deal. Um, you know, the World Health Organization's 2012 report on endocrine disrupting chemicals is about this thick. And I actually used to take it to lectures and put three copies around the room to show them I didn't make this stuff up, that this is out there. It's just not getting to you. Um, no one is paying for a good commercial on this to get it to you. They're paying for, you know, synthetic cereals in the morning for your kids to eat. Um, and you know, I don't feel judgy. I I've been through this myself with my kids. Like I said, I, I grew up on cheese whiz Oreos and diet Dr. Pepper and thought that it was his own food group. Um, and it was my journey to get away from these things as I learned. And so I don't judge, I color my hair, I keep going. Um, but people have to do this for, you know, for what makes them feel comfortable. That phrase really sums up, you know, my history of anthropology um, study. Um, you know, I think we need to really sit back and understand what we're doing to ourselves. And that environment and environmental health is not just what we think of as chemicals. It really is a variety of exposures that are not really consistent with our, our genetic template. And that noise pollution has been, and I have a section in the book on noise pollution, which I think is fascinating. People living near airports, having a higher risk of heart disease and stroke just from the stress of the noise and what to do about it, all the different ways to, to decrease noise pollution if you live in a city um, or a place where there's a lot of activity. But you know, noise pollution, light, synthetic light has been shown to be an interesting exposure. Um, stress certainly we can all relate to, especially now, but then we see the more obvious things like chemicals, um, in food and stuff like that. But radiation is something people don't think about. I mean, if I tell you I walk through my kid's school and more kids are using laptops on their lap over their vulnerable genitalia, I mean, it's shocking to me because that is radiation directly to that location, even if it doesn't get that hot, you know, as computers get hot, we really need to think about location and distance of these tech toys from our physical body. I mean, I have two boys and they have cell phones. And I'll tell you, if they put their phone in their pocket, I say, I want to be a grandmother one day. What are you doing? So they're now at the point where they turn on airplane mode of their phone. It's away from their heads at night when they're charging. They never put it in their front pockets. Um, they keep their laptops away from their groin. I mean, these are like the little things. And now they do it on their own. So I think it's just a matter of being aware, understanding why, and then just putting into some very practical changes. A chapter in your book is titled How the Human Endocrine and Immune Systems Are Disrupted by Chemical Exposures. Please tell us more about what that's about. So this is a really um, an interesting phenomenon. Um, you know, we know we have a lot of data from the endocrine disrupting, disrupting research world, okay, that was started by Theo Colburn. Um, many people may have read um, Our Stolen Future that was supported by Al Gore. Um, you know, this is about 15, 20 years ago. Um, so that was sort of the first inkling. It was almost by ha 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 haphazard discovery that they discovered that plastics are um, capable of being endocrine disruptors, particularly mimicking estrogen. I believe it was a study where they were looking at estrogen levels in mice and they didn't realize that the water feeder, which was made of plastic, was contributing to the changes in the, um, in the results. And that was an eye-opening study 
um, which I wish I had more detail, but I can't remember entirely. But that started this whole concept of our plastics contributing something that's changing hormones and that exploded. So we have plenty of plenty of good information worldwide on different classes of endocrine disruptors. There are pesticides, um, there are um, solvents, that are used in industry. They are glues, epoxy resins. Um, we certainly know food additive chemicals can be, um, can disrupt hormones. Um, but, um, and metals, certain metals can actually do that as well. Methyl mercury has been shown to be an endocrine disruptor. So that's an interesting phenomenon, but how these chemicals also affect the immune system is an area of study that has not been well looked into. And I'm actually doing that now for a new book. Um, and I think understanding how um, diseases, um, you know, uh, of the immune system. I mean, the world, the body is not completely siloed, right? They talk to each other, these systems, but how and what they say to each other is very interesting and where environmental stressors and chemicals come in to disrupt those systems is what I find truly fascinating. Because once you figure out why, you can figure out what to do about it. Um, and so really, because it's so complicated, both of them, you know, it's hard to go into this in, in detail, but I will say this endocrine disruption is named such because it's not just mimicking estrogen at low levels, which of course you don't want more estrogens because that, that basically can lead to higher rates of breast cancer, which we now know is related to endocrine disruption and these chemicals, but it also can affect um, fertility and all of the um, hormone sensitive cancers, prostate, breast uterine, endometrial, thyroid. Um, it can affect the receptors, whether the receptors go down in number. Um, there's many mechanisms by which they disrupt. And so, um, you know, not all chemicals work the same way, but they do have this endpoint of disruption. Should we fill our indoor space with plants to clean the air? Um, that is one component, absolutely. And we give a list of uh, the, the most well-tested, actually NASA did a great study on this as well, which we put in the book. Um, but we have a lot of interesting information from Indian studies because they have a very high amount of air pollution in India, um, certainly China as well. And I, we, we listed a lot of the plants that have been well-studied. The, the only issue with plants that we have to keep in mind is if you're just doing that and not removing the sources of other contaminants, you're sort of wasting your time. You want to get rid of your cleaning products that are leaving residues on um, your offices, your home, um, because they will stay there after they've been sprayed and wiped and they will aerate off into the air. They'll end up in the dust. Your kids will put them in their mouths. Your pets will have them on their paws. Um, and so you have to look at it as more of what do you take away and then what do you add to add value? Um, and so plants are very important. Even their surface area of their leaves collect chemicals, which you can wipe off. Um, and in addition, you really have to have a high volume of those plants to really make a difference. You can't just have one little plant in the corner of a big, huge, you know, 5,000 square foot space. So um, we talk about that and we want people to just have a realistic concept, but really know that plants are fabulous for mental health. We know nature is really critical. Um, but really you can't just do one thing without thinking about some of the other components that add um, harmful chemicals. Mm -hmm.